Good afternoon from St. Bart's in Midtown Manhattan. I'm Peter Thompson, Associate Rector for Formation and Liturgy here, and it is my honor to welcome you to this midday meditation for Monday in Holy Week. I invite you now to enter into a period of quietness and reflection with me. Each year on this day, we recognize Mary of Bethany and her lavish act of devotion to Jesus. At the end of a meal, she anointed Jesus' feet with expensive perfume and then wiped his feet with her hair. This incident appears in all four Gospels, but in slightly different forms. Matthew, Mark, and Luke feature an unnamed woman, though Luke's Gospel also includes a separate account of Mary of Bethany sitting at the feet of Jesus and listening to him speak. Hear now the version from John's gospel, which names Mary and places the event at the end of Jesus' ministry, near his death. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. In some Christian circles, Jesus' statement that you always have the poor with you has been seen as a discouragement from participating in efforts to achieve economic justice. If the poor are always with us no matter what we do, then what's the point of trying to help them, of organizing society in a way that minimizes the gap between the haves and the have-nots? But Jesus repeatedly advocates for those in need. Go, sell all that you have and give your money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, he says to the rich man. Blessed are the poor, he proclaims in the Sermon on the Mount. He envisions a rich man suffering torment after death while a poor man experiences pleasure. He warns that mistreating the hungry, the stranger, and the naked is as evil as mistreating the Son of Man himself. In telling us that we will always have the poor with us, Jesus is not encouraging us to ignore the needs of the poor. Rather, he is suggesting that service to others and devotion to God are not mutually exclusive options. Every now and then, I'll hear someone vent about the excesses of the institutional church. All of this money spent on lavish architecture and intricate stained glass windows, pretty vestments, and fancy choirs. Surely this money could have instead been spent on what's really important, the poor. But remember that it was Judas, not Jesus, who said such things. Jesus condones both the use of expensive perfume as an act of worship and the rich man's radical surrender of his entire fortune to those in need. Jesus can imagine a world in which enormous amounts of money are recklessly spent on both God and the poor. Both forms of spending are acceptable. Both forms of spending are good. His overarching message seems to be, give generously, make use of what you have, pour yourself out for others, not counting the cost. The object of our generosity, whether we give to God or to the poor, or ideally to both, 
seems less important than the fact that we are generous at all. That we have chosen to spend money on a greater good rather than hoard resources for our own benefit. It could very well be that our generosity towards one party might lead to more generosity towards another. Generosity need not be a zero-sum game. And in the end, is there really much of a difference between giving to God and giving to the poor? Don't we, in giving to the poor, also give to God? Didn't Jesus say, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these, you did it to me. Let us pray. Christ Jesus, whose glory was poured out like perfume, and who chose for our sake to take the form of a servant, may we also pour out our love with holy extravagance, that our lives may be fragrant with you. Amen. O God, Heavenly Father, your Son, Jesus Christ, enjoyed rest and refreshment in the home of Mary and Martha of Bethany. Give us the will to love you, open our hearts to hear you, and strengthen our hands to serve you in others for his sake, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. May the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with you on the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out your hands to serve. May the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open your hearts to love. May you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet. And may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you. May the blessing of God the one holy and undivided Trinity, be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you for joining me for this midday meditation from St. Bart's in Midtown Manhattan. We hope you will return for our other virtual offerings this Holy Week. Information about all of them is available on our website, www.stbarts.org.